So like I mentioned before, this is extremely, extremely important. The S parameters that you are given, they represent the tr behavior of the transistor at a specific bias point. Okay, so that'll be in the actual S parameter file. Usually it's like uh, a comment in there. It'll say, you know, uh, 3 volts DC, like 10 milliamps or something like that. And uh, you, so if, if, if you're designing an amplifier based on a set of S parameters, and you go through the all the you know the entire design. You have to make sure that you design a bias net a bias network that uh, matches the bias point that the S parameters were provided for. So before we continue, let me just describe the the notation that I'm using here. Um, so the voltage waves on the input of the amplifier are on side one, and the voltage waves on the output of the amplifier are on side two here. So I'm using this type of notation to represent that. Um, for forward traveling waves, so all waves traveling to the from left to right, I'm rep representing that by a, a plus sign, and then all and then all of the waves traveling from right to left, I'm representing that by uh, a negative sign. So for example, let's take this guy here, uh, v two minus. That's going to be the backwards traveling wave on the output side of the uh, the amplifier here. So I know we didn't uh, we didn't spend a lot of time covering S parameters. They're very simple. Basically you have this matrix. Uh, you've seen Z matrix and Y matrices and stuff like that uh, before. So th this is uh, similar to that. If you wanted to figure out what S11 is, for example, uh, you can just kind of expand the, the first equation here in the system of equations. So you'd have V1 plus equals S11. So if you want to know what S11 is, then you would set this term equal to zero, and we'll talk about how you would do that here in a second. So then you would solve the, um, kind of the first, you would solve for S11 over here on the left hand side, and you would end up with, um, with something that looks like this. So like I said, the this term here, the V2 with the, with the little minus sign here, that's going to be the, the backwards traveling wave here. So if you have a, a transistor that you have set up to a test fixture, and you want to measure its S11 parameter, how do you ensure that uh, th that the backwards traveling uh, voltage wave on the output side of the transistor equals zero? Well, you would just terminate the output of the transistor into a 50 ohm load. So we know from our previous discussions on the matching network and transmission line theory and stuff like that, if you have an open circuited or a short circuited transmission line, then you're going to end up with uh, reflections. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to eliminate the, the backwards traveling wave We're trying on, on the output side, so we're trying to eliminate reflection on the output side. So we know that if we have a 50 ohm system, if we terminate the output port with 50 ohms, uh, then that allows us to measure the S11 parameter. So let's take another one as an example. Let's say that we wanted to know what S21 is. So again, we'd expand the, uh, the second equation here, and you would have, again, we would terminate with a, a 50 ohm load, and we see that S21 is going to be the, the transfer function of the system, right? We have our input traveling wave, which is V1 plus, and then we have the output traveling wave, which is V2 plus. Or S21 is going to be the, uh, the gain, the voltage gain of the system. So finally, let me just say that um, we're going to be using the S parameters. Uh, we're not going to be measuring S parameters. We're not going to be determining what the, uh, you know, what the various S parameters are for a given transistor or anything like that. Uh, we're just going to be supplied with the S parameters and then we're going to be, then we're going to use them. Okay, so we're not going to do any conversions between S parameters and, and, and uh, like the S matrix and the Z matrix, for example. We're not going to do any of that kind of stuff, I think, from chapter uh, four in the text. Uh, we're just going to use the S parameters. So that's why I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time. Um, so I mentioned that once we get into uh, chapter nine, I'll give a, a brief summary of what S parameters are, and, and this is it. This is your summary. So um, from now on out, um, basically, let me just, uh, I'll just do one more quick little summary here. So let me just, let me just kind of summarize things. So S1, S11 is kind of like the, uh, the input reflection coefficient, okay? S22 is kind of like the output reflection coefficient. S2 one is related to the gain, like the forward the forward gain, and S12 is the uh, is also a gain, but it's in the uh, backwards direction. Okay, and just keep in mind that uh, these are 
These are approximations, so it depends on uh, how the input and output are matched, like I just described, uh, is, you know, in determining S11 and S21, uh, and how you need to cancel the, the backwards traveling wave, like in, the, in those two cases. Um, so just keep that in mind, but roughly speaking, you can think of the, these S parameters as being uh, either reflection coefficients or, or gains, okay? So, so that's it. We're not going to talk anymore about, you know, the theory of S parameters or anything like that, but we're just going to use it.